you know, the FBI has bigger fish to fry than, you know, a guy forging autographs out of his, his mom's basement. I mean, we have guys that are happy in basketball. We have guys that strictly know space autographs, like Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, that kind of stuff. We have uh, a guy that knows just music autographs. Uh, yeah, yeah, some of our competitors source that out to even people in other countries. And it's uh, very hard to relate to, you know, somebody that's trying to talk about a Carl Yastrzemski autograph and the person has no idea how to pronounce it, no less who he is. Guys, I want to go back to slaps because everybody wants to know this. So officially, you guys are going to be slabbing, correct? Okay, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Sports Card Madness. This is LZ, and I am here as always with Nick. And we have a big, well, multiple guests today. We have two guests. Usually we only have one. We have two. We have uh, Jimmy Jr. and Jimmy the Third of James Spence Authentication, also known as JSA. They are the leader when it comes to authenticating autographs um on really anything a anything and and I'm I'm hoping they'll they'll get into it uh with us today uh and big news that just happened with them uh they they were just acquired entered into an acquisition and we're going to get into all that I know everybody listening wants to hear about it <laughs> and hear what's going on and we will get there but uh guys first off welcome to the show thanks for coming on really appreciate it yeah awesome to have you guys Thank Guys, you. Thank yeah, you. Thank Appreciate you for having it. us. Absolutely. No, well, yeah, the, it's, we're we're happy to have you. Um, I would love to just kind of start out with both of you and talk about because this is a family business. So there's some legacy behind behind this business. And I'd love to just understand the origin, the origin story of JSA, how it began, where it's where it's gone to, both of you, kind of your roles in the company, your relationship. So if, if one of you just want to kick it off, that would be great. Go for it, Dad. Uh, well, actually, things you, you have to start back uh, basically in the late 1930s when my grandfather, Jimmy's great-grandfather, James Dugan Spence, uh, was a very avid uh, collector of autographs. Um, at the time, he worked for Con Edison, which is a util big utility company in New York, and he had an office job where he had access to a pool of secretaries. And he took advantage of them by uh, having them send out requests to a who's who of, of anybody that was famous at the time. So especially during the war years, he compiled a collection of over a thousand very notable autographs. And quite honestly, most people were more than happy and very honored to uh, give him these, these autographs through the mail. Um, when I was a little kid growing up in the 1960s, he had lived in Huntington, Long Island, and uh, the entire, well, m a large portion of the collection was in large frames in his man cave that he had. And as a little kid, I was so enamored by it, and I decided you know I wanted to start collecting autographs. So he taught me how to do self-addressed stamped envelopes, I attended all kinds of functions and, you know, grand openings and going to the ballpark because I lived not far from Yankee Stadium. So I started collecting autographs. Now, my grandfather and my father were both collectors of stamps as well. So it was a philatelic collection as well. Uh, and he combined the two by having these caches that were um, signed. Um, Interestingly enough, uh, my grandfather died in 1978 when I was about 18 years old, going off to college. And unfortunately, before he was cold, my step grandmother sold the entire collection. Oh, uh, right oh. oh. yeah. And, you know, oh. but it's it still made an imprint, you know, in my mind. I still wanted to collect. Um, it was a bummer. I tried to run down the person she sold it to. Got nowhere there. It was an antique dealer that didn't want to know from anything because I'm sure she bought the collection for next to nothing. But, you know, this is, again, back in 1978 when the value wasn't there. Um, a little bit later, I'll tell you the follow up to that story. But that's how I originally got into it um, in the, you know, around the time when Jimmy was born, 
Um, I uh, decided that I wanted to be a weekend warrior and I started selling autographs because I had a lot of doubles and I wanted to keep collecting. And I had a, at the time, a dead end job and it wasn't going very well. And I started noticing that I was making more money on the weekends than I was on my regular job. So um, the recession came, I was let go of the original job and voila, I became a full-time autograph dealer. Um, one thing led to another. I started really studying up on things, got a certificate in forensic document examination and um, then Collectors Universe purchased my, my company um, and I started PSA DNA, which you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, so with them for five years, had enough fire in the belly, got back into my own business. And Jim was just about ready to graduate college, maybe about a year and a half into it, two years. And he joined forces. Uh, we already had an established company at that time, of maybe about nine or 10 workers. Uh, and here we are, you know, six, six days ago, we, we just uh, sold the company to CCG and, um, we're still going to be working. You know, we're still employed. He's I'm passing the baton to to Jimmy. He's going to take over and I'm going to be uh, shaking hands, kissing babies and <laughs> doing whatever I can do to help out the cause. Wow. What an amazing story. I had yeah. no idea that you founded the DNA side of PSA, essentially. That is wild. No, I did not know that. Mm -mm. Unbelievable. Oh, uh, yeah. That was back in 1999. I gave him six years. I was under contract. And the day that my contract was over, uh, the very next day, I started JSA. And, um, you know, fortunately, I did not have a non-compete at the time. Uh, and I was able to do so. But it, it, re it really worked out very well. I mean, I, I, I worked, you know, extremely hard. And, and, and you know what? As much as I work, Jimmy worked harder. You know, when he Good. came on board, he just... It was on steroids at that time. He came up with a lot of new <laughs> and innovative ideas. His brother, you know, got involved in the marketing and advertising, and that helped us out. And, and you know, on top of that, we've just had a great staff as well. It's not mm. just the three of mm -hmm. us. It's, you know, we have 100 some odd people working for us, and everybody pitched in. And it was, we, you know, we opened up the office down in Florida, which was a huge success from day one. Um, and, uh, the Parsippany office, which, you know, I reside near is, uh, also flourishing as well. And then Jimmy just was able to like network the whole thing and, and get people in all different areas of the country so that we were strategically placed. I mean, you know, he gets credit for a lot of that. Um, yeah, uh, your, your hiring. customer service is amazing. Amazing. So yeah, I deal I with that. all of the companies, you know, I've called a couple times just being like, oh, Hey, you know, where, where's my order or whatever the most wonderful ladies answer the phone in New Jersey. They're so nice. And they give me like the exact they update. Are. Well, your autograph's getting voted on right now, but one guy's on vacation and whatever. And I'm like, oh, this is great. <laughs> you know, um, where if it's, too much if it's another company, then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it's yeah, another company, some of you don't really hear yeah, yeah, some of our competitors source that out to even mm -hmm. people in other countries. And it's uh, very hard to relate to you know, somebody that's trying to talk about a Carl Yastrzemski autograph, and the person has no idea how to pronounce it, no less who he is. Right. And it's it's a you know you lose that personal touch. I don't believe in you know uh, that that you know a real person picks up the phone in our offices. Sure. You're not mm -hmm. dealing with a, a recorded message or you know press this number if you want that or this not. Mm -hmm. It's it's not like that. I've never want you know. I think the key is is that I've always treated it you know and Jimbo as well as a mom pa type organization. Mm. And, and that may change a bit now that we're going over to CCG. I'm sure they're gonna you know, wanna make it a little more corporate, more professional, but um, I always saw value in that. And mm -hmm. you know, mm. it just started off by you know, four people in an office at one time and anybody, myself included, picking up the phone. So it's, wow. uh, it's so grown it, and you know, we're quite yeah. proud of it. Yeah, it's, it sounds like it's one of your core principles and it, and it shows. So, you know, kudos to you guys and and I hopefully hopefully you can keep that going as as you kind of transition here. Um I just had one follow up around you got a forensics certificate. That sounds really cool. So, can yeah. you explain like 
the process of you getting that? And then how many other staff members now have something like that? Okay, at the time, um, what happened is um, I, I had a reputation in the industry going into PSA DNA, but when I got there, they wanted me to have, have some type of certification. So I ended up taking, you know, a course and, a, and, and tests, passed it. And um, there were only four P I had chosen three other people to help authenticate. And one by one, they fell off and, you know, it started to, you know, uh, I, I wanted to move it from the California office to New Jersey. So, um, the, the company that had certified me, actually, the guy aged out and eventually died. So I was unable to, you know, get that course. But in-house, you know, we've been able to teach all of these people. I've never once hired an authenticator for JSA. Every single person has had to go through a system of training and testing and also how their peers felt about them. That's very important. So it's more than just a, you know, a testing uh, you know, if, if their peers have see value in their authentication skills, we dub them and and Jimmy actually, uh, you know, honors them with the title of authenticator when they're ready. I mean, some people, honestly, they could become an authenticator within a couple of years if they already have a good base and they're willing to learn. Other people, they could be with me for 10, 15 years and I'll never be authenticators. Wow. It's just, you, know, you, you might have that passion or the knack or the skill, you know, and some people don't. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, fortunately, how many authenticators do we have on, you know? We have about 14. 14. Um, and all of them specialize in different things. I mean, we have guys that are happy in basketball. We have guys that strictly know space autographs like Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, that kind of stuff. We have a, a guy that knows just music autographs. Um, there's, a, there's a gentleman that knows um, artists and writers and, and different authors and stuff like that. So there's just too many autographs for one authenticator to know everything. If an authenticator tells you he knows every autograph, he's, he's full of it. Um, there's just so much information out there and so much to study. And that's what makes JSA so accurate is you know, we have consultants that specialize in all these different fields and our communication where when we're out on the road, we could put an image of a, a Harper Lee autograph and, and have that ping that certain group of people that knows Harper Lee's autograph so well. So we're, we're able to properly authenticate, a, you know, to kill a mockingbird uh, book and, um, and, and do it very accurately and efficiently. So, um, but yeah, no, it's, it, it takes some time for, for certain authenticators to become an authenticator. You really have to have the aptitude. You have to have the desire, the passion to really study autographs and to study it properly. You know, it's not yeah. just like staring at a Babe Ruth autograph and then eventually it's going to click in your, in your brain like a magic eye. You, you really have to be taught by certain authenticators on how to, what to look for, overlapping, uh, the sizing of the letters, the, um, uh, the, the, the pressure, how deliberate an autograph is, you know, sometimes we'll go straight to forgeries. We keep forgeries on file and we'll compare and contrast an autograph that looks funky to us to some sophisticated forgeries that we failed in the past. So um, there's science behind it. We have a, a video spectral comparator that can test the age of ink that can magnify, um, you know, the autograph to, to a certain degree. And uh, it has all different types of UV lighting. So we're able to detect if something was removed or any type of suspicious behavior on the, on the piece. But most of the time it's comparing and contrasting uh, of autographs that we just have such a great feel on, or we share that with, with our teammates that, mm -hmm. that know that, that Michael Jordan autograph so well. Wow, it's interesting. So cool. Just to give you an idea of the specialization, we have one uh, consultant that works for us is uh, name is Phil Sears. He only authenticates Walt Disney autographs for us. Wow. That's, wow. That's, that's, but it's a valuable resource to us. And he's been with yeah. us since one. He's a great guy. He, he, he offers his opinions and he knows like all the secretarial ones. He knows everything about it. Wow. Outside of that, no, that's not his shtick. He just wants yeah. to you know help us out. And many of these consultants are like that. They're, they're people that specialize in things and they want to be part of our organization in maybe some small way. And it's been very valuable and we, we have a very close relationship with these people.
these specialized authenticators, is this almost like your your secret sauce or do other competitors, like how much do you know about your other competitors? Are they doing the same thing? Do they also have these specialized people or are they more general? Well, well, um, I could speak for, well, I could speak for perhaps PSA DNA. I mean, I started that company. I left them with a very, very good product. Um, you know, when I left, but they've been through two other transitions since I've been there. They had this, you know, the Steve grad years and Steve worked under me when I was there. Uh, he was there till about, I don't know, six or seven years ago. Yep. And then he went on to back it. So those are our two competitors. Um, I can't vouch for what their exemplars uh, files look like. Those are specimens of autographs. I, I'd like to believe we have the biggest and the best. Um, you know, I, I spend both, both of us spend a great deal of time probably adding between 200 and 300 examples into the file each day. And that, wow. that you're, you're talking about a million examples wow. of autographs, all, you know, chronological, all field order. It's, it's an amazing file that, uh, you know, is our toolbox. That's what mm -hmm. we give our people, you know, and then we double check their work. I mean, and, and there's other authenticators that do the same. So, um, you know, as far as what, what do you think about some of the other, uh, uh, you know, I mean, we're, we're friendly with our two major competitors, PSA, DNA and Beckett. I can't say they operate the same way we do. I mean, I've never worked under them. So, you know, I can't say definitively, but uh, some of their guys and some of our guys have have crossed paths. I mean, it's just business. Um, and you do get some feedback from, you know, what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong. And we're always looking for improvement. And that was this this uh, acquisition that we saw the, the infinite resources that CCG has and they're backed by Blackstone. Um, so it's just going to give us the ability to, to really provide these wonderful services, including encapsulation of <laughs> trading cards. I know everybody's waiting for that JSA branded encapsulated uh, trading card. And not only do they're, they're going to be doing trading cards, but they're the leader in comic book grading, um, they'll, they're also the leader in, in coins and stamps and currency and you name it. Um, but there's also these different products that people want to have encapsulated that are signed, like video games are becoming very, very popular. VHS tapes, sealed VHS tapes that I see at a lot of the different comic cons that are signed by Arnold Schwarzenegger and, you know, all sorts of different people that, that people like to have preserved. I mean, there's a, there's an obsession with the slab. Um, but it has to be the right slab. It has to have the right brand. It has to be, you know, aesthetically pleasing and have the right flip and all the information on it. And uh, what we're currently working on is just absolutely wonderful. And I can't wait to share it with the industry. Um, lots of great things that are going to happen and they're going to happen within the next month. So just stay tuned. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> awesome. So, your origin story is amazing and it's really cool to kind of hear about the operations a bit. What is like, what's the scale of your company now? Like how many autos are you doing in a month or a year? And also what's the spread between sports versus like entertainment or music and, you know, like, or Funkos or, you know, whatever. I'm just kind of interested there what that looks like. Um, I mean, I can give you a couple of snippets that, that may define that better. Um, sure. Let's see. Um, Jimmy announced to me, I don't know, a couple of years ago. And I understand, I didn't know what a Funko Pop was six or seven years ago. I had no idea what one was. But he told me, he said, Dad, we are now authenticating more Funko Pops than baseballs. And I was like shocked because, you know, that's what we started doing was, uh, you know, I started authenticating sports and baseball was the number one. Uh, and to this day, it's still the number one um, mm. item that we authenticate are, are, are sports uh, baseball related autographs. But now it's been surpassed. And why? Because we've gone international. Jimmy goes over to the Middle East and he sees Funko Pops galore over there. And that's what they're interested in. Not necessarily, you know, George Brett, you know, that's not their, their thing over there. And just think how vast the collecting community is in the world. And it's, it's, it's only goes to show you that, you know, some of these worldwide things such as entertainment, maybe soccer and basketball, you know, are going to surpass what got us started in this, which was baseball and say football. Um, that's, that truly is, is amazing to see how, 
how uh, the, the times have evolved. I mean, you know, I'm not going to say they change. They just evolve. They move on. Um, and, and we have to embrace that. And encapsulation is key to this whole thing. I mean, I looked at it this way, quite honestly. We, we were going to get into our own encapsulation. We actually have an, we, we were able to engineer one. But it was taking a long time trying to figure out how we were going to, you know, incorporate it into the computerization and, and log everything in. We look at CCG, they already have a hundred different slabs. I mean, why are we reinventing the wheel? You know, this get us, this is going to be very eye-opening for a lot of people. It, the company, our division now will double, if not triple the size in a year's mm -hmm. time. I mean, mm -hmm. and they, well, they have these resources, they have the infrastructure. They have 800 some odd employees, CCG. Yeah. We have a mm hundred, -hmm. I mean, imagine. And, and also it's not just developing a slab. We, we developed a beautiful slab for an X card a few years ago. It's the whole operations of management of, of the entire project. You know, we're, we're extremely busy with just authenticating baseballs and Funko Pops and, and issuing letters of authenticity and our basic cert program. We're, and we increasingly get busier as time goes on and we would keep hiring new people and you know, going to different areas of the world. Um, so it, it's almost like we weren't ready as a company to even take on a huge project like that. Like my dad said, you know, it would triple our business. So CCG was, <clears throat> Was, is, is perfect for that. They have the whole system down for, for encapsulating anything. I mean, they've been doing it for over a decade for, you know, with comic books and that, you name it. So, um, you know, they, they, they know the whole process. But we provide the expertise. So exactly. expertise, mm -hmm. the, you know, the infrastructure that they have, this is a, a beautiful, you know, marriage here. Marriage. And I, mm -hmm. I'm excited about it. Um, and, you know, hey, listen, I'm 64 years old now. You know, Jimbo's not quite 40. I mean, this is the time to do it. I mean, I, I still am going to be an active part. And in fact, you know, I'm still going to auction houses. I'm still going to be, you'll see me at the National and a number of other shows. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be there, you know, lending whatever words of wisdom I might be able to add into everything. But, you know, his his generation, it's it's time, you know, for, for mm -hmm. the baton to be passed. And, and they're excited about it. And quite honestly, CCG likes that succession. They they like the idea that, nice. you know, I had a grandfather, father, you know, son, you right. know. And, it's a great know, story. He has cousins involved in the business. We, and, and, you know, he has a brother involved in the business. Yeah. I have two sisters that do our witness protection program. It's a lot of Spences. Yeah. JSA. Yeah, we have a nephew oh, by the name yeah. of James Spence Meyer. That's do involved. you guys want to adopt? Because yeah, man, I, you can adopt me. I'm really <laughs> jealous. Like you guys are having so much fun, yeah. man. It's like a yeah. true apprenticeship, like from mm -hmm. olden times, right? Like mm -hmm. the, yeah. you know, somebody yeah, that's know. like an electrician it's or a plumber or whatever. You just tag along and learn, right? And then you mm -hmm. get good at it yourself. And it's it's so cool. Very very it's cool. A lot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's another key to the whole thing. Hmm. We still are active collectors. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is not just. I'm not just selling widgets. You know, I mean, if I was selling, you know, women's shoes, I couldn't get that excited about it. I still am involved in this. I have a, a world-class collection. I love it. I still get a kick out of getting a $20 item, you know, in my collection. Mm -hmm. I get a kick out of getting a $20,000 mm -hmm. item in my collection, sure. but I still, I still love this stuff. And, and that's, unfortunately, if you talk to a bunch of dealers and maybe even some of the authenticators in the field, when they stop collecting, this becomes a job for them. And, and I, I still have that passion. Um, you know, I, I get a kick out of when somebody finds something for me and they, they're on the lookout for things that I could use in my collection. And, you know, I'm, I, I just really embrace the whole thing. I just love it. It's, it's a part of my DNA, you know? So and all the authenticators that, that work for JSA, they share the same passion. They, they, they collect their, you know, wh whatever that may be, they're, they're signed trading cards, they're signed comic books, they have uh, perfect game pictures that they collect with stats. Uh, we all share that same passion, that's that same obsession with collecting authentic autographs. And, um, you know, it, it, they, they share the same drive to keep authentic autographs valuable. And that's, mm -hmm. that's our, our mission statement. 
is uh, there's just so many fake autographs out there. They're becoming more and more sophisticated. And it's our job to keep the, to, to continue to fail those and to con continue to pass the valid autographs and, and put those on a pedestal. Because the moment an authentication company starts authenticating, um, you know, a bunch of fake autographs, especially if it's a, a, a super rare autograph, it's immediately going to de devalue that, that real autograph autograph that you have so uh, we're, we're in a very very important position in this industry and um you know we're going to keep it that way yeah to reinforce what jimmy said like say um we have autographs in our own collection in the back of our mind we don't want to cheapen them in any way by somebody seeing bad autographs in the field and that's you know we we if you own something you you feel like you have this duty to protect it and, and other people, and you don't want this population of bad forgeries, you know, permeating the hobby that's going to drag yours down. Because what it does is it takes that person out of the market. If a person has a bad autograph, he puts it in his man cave and he adores it for 20, 30, 40 years. And then he dies and his wife gets it. And then she finds out it was a forgery and he's been had. I mean, he could have been buying a good one during that whole period of time. And yet... He's been taken out of the marketplace and been duped. And, you know, and, and nobody wants to see that happen. I mean, we're, we're yeah. collectors at heart. Of course. Yeah. I mean, I deal with that all the time with my old vintage basketball cards. I have, I've myself have gotten good at like, nope, I'm not touching that. Um, and you guys have been probably the most accurate in my opinion. Um, all right. So this, the process for authenticating, um, I'm really curious, obviously you can't, tell us everything but i'm at a high level i'm just curious like okay cool i'm sending in a 1969 top signed will chamberlain okay what what happens like how does that get processed and also how do you envision it changing now that you're going to slab it like um what what do both of those paths look like hmm. yeah um we have a process where no one person in our company myself or jimmy we don't make the only decision. That's not the way we operate. It's a checks and balance. In a lot of cases, there could be 10, 12, 15 people opining on one single autograph. And depending on the scores, and we have a whole scoring system, uh, depending on that, something will either pass, fail, or go inconclusive. And um, that that's really important so that if somebody goes rogue, you know, there's, you know, or they, they want to do like a wink and a nod for their, uh, their, their favorite uncle. It's not <laughs> going to happen in our system. There, there, there is no autograph that there's just gets, yeah, there's, there's no yeah. one autograph that gets one person to look at and say, oh, that's good. Here's the letter for it. Yeah. And that's not, and that's going to transcend to these encapsulations as well. And I could tell you on any given day, I could have a bad day. Maybe I missed something or maybe I, I, I had an opinion that varied from the other folk. And you know what? They check and they and they say, wait a minute, I happen to know something about that or I know of that. And they can and, and they could stop it dead in its tracks before it gets slammed or get a letter. I mean, that's so important to the process. So mm. this way, if, if we missed one, the next guy is not going to. The, the likelihood of us sending something out there into the market bad is 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 lessened yeah and it's a it's a very collaborative effort you know these images of the autographs that are being submitted are put into um a town hall and it's all categorized baseball basketball football writers and that way the experts in those certain fields can monitor those particular autographs that are being submitted and then authenticated so that gives us the ability to i mean i'm sure you've seen our, our events page and, and where we are and it seems like we're in 15 to 20 different events all throughout the world every single weekend that's how we're able to efficiently and effectively authenticate so many different autographs is we use technology to uh share this information and share images and you know all of our guys are um trained to to determine if uh, an autograph is live ink, because that's something that you really can't detect, even with some high magnification or high uh, um, uh, images, uh, high resolution images. So um, that's that's how a lot of our our process is done through uh, through virtual authentication. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we, our resources go back to, you know, when my father was, was a dealer. So all of those, all of those, uh, you know, texts of, you know, determining where, when a baseball was manufactured or um, the stampings on this certain baseball, this baseball was manufactured, you know, post 1990s. So, you know, somebody like Roger Maris could have never signed this baseball. You know, we have th- those types of resources that we share with our entire team. And um, that's, it's a fun collaborative effort. And we uh, we're looking to take that to CCG and enhance it with their technology. Mm. And I remember sometimes, you know, a lot of these processes were were done in house. I remember back in the early 1990s, searching around the hobby, trying to find somebody that knew the dating of baseballs. I asked everybody Mm -hmm. and I realized that nobody really knew. And so I locked myself in my home for two weeks and I went through a, a, a very extensive search and study about what balls were manufactured I, I relied on team sign balls and auction catalogs and i created this yeah. massive spreadsheet which is proprietary it's not you know you can't find it on our website or anything like that but it's just helped us out immeasurably you know trying to determine if that ball could have been signed during this time and now they're starting to you know counterfeit the balls and they're and we, we just know the markings really well and, and honestly we've developed even beyond whatever equipment we have our eyes have become calibrated to the autographs and to these markings. And that's what really, you can't duplicate that. And that's why, you know, a lot of people are talking about AI these days. Um, I think you could use AI when it comes to stamps and coins and trading, and, cards. And trading cards and things that are, I guess, autographs more, are different. more quantitative. Yeah. They're yeah. signed differently every time. You could sign your name mm-hmm. 20 times on a piece of paper right now it's going to look different. And that's one of the things us authenticators look for in valid autographs. If you see an autograph that's identical every single time, it's not being signed, it's being drawn, it's being forged. It's, it's impossible to sign your name exactly the, the same way. So, huh. you know, AI that's a helps. really good point. I, it's I'm a really sure, good point. I'm yeah. sure it's going to, going to, to help us, especially with, uh, you know, just making our exemplar file faster and more mm-hmm. efficient, but it's also going to free us up to do the research projects that J2 has done in the past and, and start to look at, you know, uh, the specifics of when this NBA basketball was manufactured. You know, maybe Reggie Lewis couldn't have signed this, this, this particular basketball with this specific marking or where this, you know, where the David Stern um, stamping is positioned on the basketball. So um, I think, you know, th- this this just gives us an opportunity to do so much more research. And, and we love doing this research for the hobby. And it's just going to enhance the whole experience for the collector. Right. I'm not that conceited to think that AI won't be a part of autographs at some point. But I think it's mm-hmm. going to take a much longer period of time, mm-hmm. you know, than say, cards or coins took. But it, it, it will come at some point down the road. But what better base, mm. uh, you know, for determining it than our exemplar file i mean which has been fine-tuned you know it's been manicured over the years and things Mm -hmm. that we thought at one time might have been valid we realize you know all of a sudden the light bulb comes over your head and said ah you know this is secretarial uh you know and 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 things do change over a while just like Mm -hmm. you know they thought that dinosaurs were slow and stupid and now they figured out that they were pretty smart and they're their fleet of foot, you know, over time, you know, the things do change. Uh, hopefully, you know, we haven't made too many mistakes along the way. Mm-hmm. We're human. There have been mistakes. We're able to handle them better than anybody. And, uh, you know, they're few yeah. and far between. So we, we just discovered a John Denver secretarial that has been authenticated by everyone, you know, in the past. So this is some, this new information um, that we're able to obtain, wow. continue to study is, is something that we plan on doing mm-hmm. um, moving forward. And, and, and just to catch, you know, every, uh, just to keep the authentic autographs uh, valuable. I think that's so, so important. Yeah. Yeah. The, the value. So I've been in the tech industry for a very long time, guys. And the fact that you have this file of, of over 1 million autographs, that is insanely valuable. To the point around AI, the mm-hmm. only way I, AI works is if you train it. And how do you train it? With that million autographs that you're sitting on. Data. So 
you know, I think it, it will be able to bring you maybe 60% of the way there. But to your point that you guys brought up earlier around like the pressure of the signature, no, you probably, you probably can't do that, but maybe it can get you 60% of the way, helps speed up the process. And then the human being comes in that last 40% and has to do the last mm-hmm. five checks. So, but that, mm-hmm. that, that file that you have, that is so valuable, <laughs> so valuable. I, I wouldn't doubt it. And maybe they even mentioned it like, CCG, did they talk about how valuable that is? That's probably a big reason why why they probably wanted to work with you guys is just that sitting on that that data. That's a that's immense. Interesting. Yeah, interestingly enough, the the file was created one by one. These autographs were put into this file. We didn't have mm-hmm. some kind of algorithm that was able to capture them off of eBay or anything like that. We we're talking about they were selected one by one every day. I'm searching for new exemplars to put into yeah. that file. I'm grabbing them either off the internet or some people send me images, you know, you know, via email or, or whatever. It's just, it, it's been a collective process. People, things from my collection, Jimmy's collection are, you know, it's, it's all over the place. That's great. Well, congratulations on that file guys. Congratulations. That's, yeah. that's we, amazing. We yeah. For, yeah. forever <laughs> no so we could if, if, um i want to go i want to go back to the slabs guys i want to go back to slabs because everybody wants to know this so officially you guys are going to be slabbing correct that yes. is correct Head, yes. so okay. so they're going to start with comic books and magazines that that is uh that is what my uh my leadership team is telling me um, and that will happen within the next three weeks. So it's not going to happen six months from now. Again, this company has everything all planned. They have all the, the, the different companies, the label company, the, they know how to efficiently encapsulate comic books. So this was a plug and play. They just needed that autograph authentication expertise to do it properly. And uh, so, yeah, they're going to be starting off with the comic books. Mm-hmm. You can only imagine you know, all the, the signed comic book collectors out there that have this green label on, on the CGC um, uh, label. And, you know, they did it the right way. They didn't have an autograph authenticator. So they, if you had a book that was signed by Stan Lee and it wasn't witnessed by a CGC rep, they would call it handwriting on the comic book. They would still authenticate the comic book because the comic book was valuable, but they they didn't feel comfortable, uh, you know, determining that Stan Lee did sign that book. So now you're able to resubmit those green label books and have your Stan Lee autograph authenticated and it will get a specific label that's co-branded CGC JSA. That's wonderful. Guys, when are cards coming? <laughs> when is that? When can we, yes. when can I send you a card that's autographed to get slapped? It, 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 you know what, in, in time, and it's it's going to happen within the next, I would think, three months, two months. They're It'll pretty, all, they're they're pretty aggressive with it. That's something that surprised me. They're not like just laying back and saying, oh, it'll come. Mm. No, every day they're coming up with, you know, new timelines. And I don't think they've really addressed that specifically, but they will. And I could see them, you know, uh, you know, hey, listen, they bought our company. <laughs> they want to maximize, you know their effort and, and use our name and, and, and justifiably. So, I mean, that's, that's what this is all about to make it bigger and better. This company is, you know, a great company and I'm glad to be aligned with it. I think you feel the same way, right? No Jim? doubt. No doubt. Um, hey guys, if, if you are d- dipping your toes and you're going to get into trading card encapsulation and grading traded cards and, and grading the autographs, you guys have been in this industry for a while. Have have you been uh, keeping up on the cleaning controversy that's been going on the past couple of weeks where people are, quote unquote, cleaning cards to get better grades? Do you have a stance on that? So we're, we're autograph authenticators. We like to mm-hmm. stay in our lane. You know, what's the famous uh, saying? Jack of all trades, master of none. Yes. Um, <laughs> this is another reason why we aligned ourselves with CCG. They they know uh, the, all the all the tricks that that go on with trading cards and getting better grades with the trading cards. They have a whole division for that. They have a whole division for sports cards. They have a whole division for Pokemon and Magic the Gathering and all the TCG stuff. Um, so they have experts in those fields that obsess over that. 
we're going to continue to obsess over autograph authentication and um, and and let them you know handle that that kind of stuff. Yeah, we've got our hands. I mean, we're learning every day more and more about autographs. I mean, we never stop doing that. Yeah. Can you imagine throwing like learning how to grade cards on top of that? We only <laughs> yes. or stamps. That's I'm not going to do that. Crazy. Well, because, yeah. Then then we're going to lose uh, you know our stature in this whole hot. I don't I don't want to do that. Why? Why? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You don't need that. No, I don't, I don't need that. No, Interesting. No. So I know earlier you guys spoke about counterfeiting beyond being on the rise. So I've experienced this personally, just building my sets. It is amazing. There's, it's a spectrum, right? Secretarial is, I guess, counterfeit, but it was well-intentioned, right? It was a little bit different than somebody who's literally going off, signing 20 Michael Jordan cards and, and slipping them by. Have you noticed a rise like in the last few months? Because I personally have, and I know a lot of collectors have seen some counterfeits, you know, hit the market. And I've also noticed that some of the other authenticators have really locked down even stuff that I've got signed in person or um, through a formal public signing, they they'll reject it. It's, it's very interesting. So have you noticed an influx and um, have you noticed the other companies getting harsher? Well, there's a certain paranoia, I think, at times, and justifiably so, because there are so many bad autographs out there. But, you know, the layers, laser prints have come in on balls. I mean, things that not even are on flat surfaces, they're able to, like, create auto pens as well. It's, it's really interesting. Um, but again, that's why we have so many sets of eyes looking at things, because we keep track of these things. If we find a new forgery or a new strand, it goes into our exemplar file. And therefore, again, that toolbox helps everybody out to learn and to spot things. Um, it's it's never going to end. I mean, a year from now, there'll be something else, you know, that that is entered into uh, the mix because, you know, and unfortunately, these people don't go away that these forgers don't go away that quickly. I mean, there there's it's a very slow process. I've known very few over the years that have actually gotten incarcerated or or fined in some manner, you know, so you know, the FBI has bigger fish to fry than you know, a guy forging autographs out of his, his mom's basement. Mm -hmm. um, so, but, but yeah, no, the, the, go back to the secretarial. Some of them are very, very good. Mm -hmm. And, and if you're not introduced to them, you know, like Irene Faber, Red Faber's wife used to routinely sign autographs through the mail for him. And a lot of those are being sold as real. And, um, you know, that's, uh, that's a, you know, a whole nother thing of, of creating, we have all this data from, since January 2005 of how many pieces passed our authentication, how many pieces failed our authentication and aligning ourselves with CCG. They have a whole tech department that's able to extract this data and possibly make it public and show exactly how many, you know, red favors were authenticated. And that will drive the price, drive the value of, of nice. such a, uh, you know, a, a secretarial version of that autograph and um and and you know keep keep the value high on those those types of items hey it doesn't help that a lot of the celebrities sports uh, figures today are signing very sloppy it doesn't help you know that it's a lot easier in my estimation to authenticate a babe ruth because of you know the uh, the structure of his autograph i mean there's more to work with i mean some of these mm -hmm. guys the chinos of the world it's 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 like mm -hmm. a check mark so a lot of times those things are going inconclusive because mm -hmm. they're not giving you enough and uh and it, it would be irresponsible for us to authenticate some of that slop so, so panini <laughs> wasn't sending babe ruth ten thousand stickers to sign right <laughs> no. <laughs> no. yeah no. <laughs> yeah uh, all right. Hey, well, hey guys, we, we appreciate the time and, and we want to get to our last question because we want to be respectful of your time. I'm sure you are insanely busy with this acquisition and, and everything going on, but we ask every guest. So we'll ask both of you, if you wouldn't mind, it's, it's the typical coffee question. Okay. So if you could have coffee or a beer, we'll say with any sports figure who's either living or deceased, who would it be and why? Sports figure. Sports figure, living or deceased. Well, I consider I consider bodybuilding a sport. Sure, I mean, yes. I think it's an art, and I, I probably wouldn't hesitate 
to say that Arnold Schwarzenegger would be, you know, one of my top choices too. Yeah, he, I mean, music it might be Bob Dylan, but um, I think Arnold Schwarzenegger would be the guy. Um, there's yeah, I mean, depending on what field you're in, <laughs> yeah, there's okay. there's a lot of people I'd I'd love to sit down and have a chat with, um, and I and I also talk to them about their autographing habits as well. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people hmm. are always surprised, you know, when I bring that up a lot. And I know a lot of celebrities, you know, and they, I, I bring that up and, and talk to them about. Schwarzenegger has a very sophisticated secretarial version that mm -hmm. not a lot of people can detect. Um, whoever has been doing it for him has been doing a phenomenal job, but they're so consistent on the terminal stroke of, of the last name. And uh, it's just certain things that we pick up on that you'll, you'll see like how identical the autograph is in comparison to real autographs. But then there's one uh, part of the autograph that, that just isn't consistent at all, yet consistent with every single one of these secretarial versions. So, yeah, I, I would love to talk to Schwarzenegger about that. Yeah, Jimmy Carter's okay. autograph is like that. He's had a yeah. great secretary over the years. I mean, you know, you got to, we have to separate those two, you know, mm. the good from the bad. I mean, hey, before we leave, and I alluded mm -hmm. to this before, and this is like probably the coolest thing that happened to me in my collecting career. The coolest thing that's happened probably in my professional career is getting aligned with CCG. But as far as collecting is concerned, and I'm sure Jimmy can appreciate this as well, we have mentioned before about, my grandfather, his great grandfather, in this collection that my um, my step grandmother had sold, you know, right after his death. Well, um, I was at an auction house, specifically REA, at a Chester, New Jersey. I live in Mendham, New Jersey. The two towns are right next to each other. I'm about six miles away from their office. I go there to do a full fledged authentication with one of my um, authenticators. We went there. This is about three years ago in June. It'll be three years. I go there, full day of authentication. The end of the authentic, they have a checklist. And at the end, we're, you know, we're checking everything off, making sure everything's done. And about 4.30 rolls around as we're making the last check on there. The owner walks in with two boxes of autographs and says, hey, we got some more autographs for you to look at. Well, <laughs> my my employee his his eyes were rolling he thought he was out of there for the day but dutifully you know i took the first binder out and started to look through it and he says by the way there are four more boxes that we have to bring in so you know the guy was, <laughs> you know our, our employee was just like oh my god we're going to be here forever so i started going through i started flipping through the pages one by one, I got to the third page and I noticed that every single autograph I'm looking at says to James Spence. It was Stop my grandfather's it. collection. What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was Calm. surreal. It was Calm. absolutely surreal. I, I immediately closed the book because I he didn't, his eyes were locked on me this whole time because he knew. Oh, and he did. Oh, this okay. Story, uh -huh. this story about, no, this story yeah. about my grandfather had been around for years and years. Mm -hmm. And I also had an article written about his collection back in 1943. So I closed the book and I said, this is my grandfather's collection. And he shook his head. Yes. And I said, where did it come from? And I, and he, and he says, you know, we're obliged, you know, it's proprietary information. We have to be, you know, we, we can't say. And I said, well, what's the story? He goes, well, we have to, this is a consignment we have to size. So you can't do that. You have to go back to this person and I'm going to make an offer on it, right? um, but I'll come back. And I came back and I, honestly, I couldn't look at it that way because I started hyperventilating. Yeah, of <laughs> course. I was afraid. I was afraid if that was followed up by crying, which I was about ready to do, that wow. the price would go up. So I, I had to like stop right there. A couple of days later, I looked at it with my other son and um I offer, made an offer, and three days later, they took this back to the consigner, who was the daughter of the woman, the antique dealer that my grandmother had sold a collection to. She had died. The daughter intercepted all of this. They accepted my offer, and they sold the collection back to me in, my, it's in its entirety. And it's just incredible to see 
my wow. grandfather's collection, all beautifully categorized. And it's a who's who. I mean, it's it's hard. You know, people, do, it's not just sports. It's everything. I mean, name names. Give us a few. Two Babe Ruths, two Ty Cobbs. But getting outside of um, sports, every governor at the time, there were only 48 states, there were, you know, and there were like weird things in there, like, you know, the, the president of Ceylon, you know, which is no longer a country. Wow. Um, and, and then, you know, I, I know Jimmy has one that I thought was really cool, which was the first president of Alcatraz or the first warden, I'm sorry, not president, warden of Alcatraz. And, it, and Harry Truman's autograph right before he dropped the atom bomb, two signatures mm -hmm. and Johnny Weissmuller. And it goes on and on and on. And I, I, I don't have the time to look through this whole collection yet. You know, maybe I do now at this point, but it, it just all came back to me. And it was only six miles away from my home, the whole collection. And uh, it, it's special and it will never leave the mm -hmm. family again. You know, it'll always be there. Well, the universe brought that back to you. That is that is beautiful. That is a beautiful story. Yeah, it was really wow. cool. Wow. Jeez, that's nuts. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thanks for sharing uh, that. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. No, it was a cool, cool thing that happened to our family. Uh, I'm very appreciative. But you know, here's the key: the the owner of the uh, auction house, uh, Brian Dwyer, who's a friend of mine, he didn't have to go to bat for us. He didn't have to like approach that woman and say, he, he was obliged to sell it in his auction, but he saw what it meant to me personally and to the family. And he, I got to give him a lot of credit because I don't think a lot of the other auction houses would have done that for me. Honestly. That's great. That's really, it makes me kind of happy that the story yeah. ended that way personally. Mm -hmm. um, all right, guys. So we're, we're up on time for this. Uh, I figured I'd give you a chance in case the audience wants to reach out. Maybe they got something really unique or, you know, they want to um, get something authenticated or they just want to like hit you guys up. What's the best way to find you or reach out to you? Yeah. So you, probably the easiest way is through social media. It's at JSA LOA uh, through Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, you can also visit our website, jsaloa.com. And um, yeah, we like you guys said, we have an excellent customer service team that's willing to help you guys out. Um, and we travel all over the place too. So don't think you have to mail your items into either the Florida office or the New Jersey office. Uh, you could visit us. We, you know, we go to Bowling Green. We go to, you know, Sarasota, Florida. We're in Portland, Oregon. We're all over the place. Um, so it just makes it very, very convenient for the collector to hand deliver that item and then pick it up the same day. Yeah. Events and appearances are listed on our website. So it's no problem navigating around and trying to figure out when we'll be in your neighborhood. You know, that's, that's really good. Awesome. Yeah. I love the local aspect of it. Um, you're at, you know, Boston comic-con and, uh, the Shriners show and that for the audience, that's like a 300 table local show, um, just South of Boston. So yeah, the fact that you guys are, are local is nice because I can get something there. I can get the sticker on it if, or I can at least get it, you know, going there. So it's pretty awesome. Great guys. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'm super pumped for these, you know, at first, like you said, a month to uh, comic book slabbing, then maybe hopefully six months to cards, um, I'm psyched. I'm going to use it uh, for a lot of my stuff. So, mm -hmm. so thanks again for sharing all that. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks the, for the ode of confidence. The magazine slab is going to be impressive. That's it. Magazine. Oh, I forgot so that. All your Sports Illustrated, all those old magazines that you have signed by oh, Will Chamberlain and Jerry West. I mean, it's it's going to be really cool stuff. State of the art technology. Um, they just uh, they just uh, revamped their whole slab, so you can check it out on their uh, their YouTube. Um, so we're excited. You got to get Absolutely. Scott S.I. King to do the uh, do a Sports Illustrated <laughs> what, collection. What he's got twenty thousand or something? 20, yeah, like twenty thousand signed. Yeah, we'll have to reach out. To Scott. Interesting yeah. enough, I, I I know Scott well. He's from my hometown of Englewood, New Jersey. Oh, yeah. so both of There's us. Something in the water there. Small you need to world. Like autographs. Yeah, yeah Jersey. That's the mecca. That is the mecca. Awesome. Yeah. Well, All thanks right. again, guys. Well, we thanks, guys. It. Guys, thanks. thank you. All right.